How we doing, everybody? We're back. Baseball's back. Matty Ice is back. The boys in blue and orange are back. Welcome to the Polar Report, your favorite Mets podcast presented by 732 Studios. I'm Sergeant Pepper. And I am Matty Ice, a.k.a. Matt, the biggest Mets fan you'll ever fucking meet. Seriously, and it's been <laughs> an unbelievable start. The boys are rolling. We're we Mets fans, so rolling. we know it means nothing at this point of the season, but damn, it feels good. Oh, yeah. It means absolutely nothing right now. I mean, we've been here, done that last yeah. year. I mean, we were having a great – we didn't have this good of a start last year, but – you know, in the past f- five, six years, we've definitely had some good starts. But yeah. I don't know. Something feels different about this year. I don't know. I'm, I'm, we're just hitting on all cylinders right now. And just I feel like this team is complete. It's definitely the most complete team we've had since the 2016 World Series team for sure. A hundred percent. And last year it was like you'd have two games, you'd have DeGrom, you'd have whoever pitch next. And then it'd be two games of absolute dog shit. I mean, it was like every week you knew there was two or three games automatic loss but this year like pitching's been unbelievable the rotation's unbelievable the Mets fucking rolling first team in the league to 10 wins like that's crazy and the difference I mean a complete difference from last year is we don't have Luis Rojas as our manager we actually have (laughs) someone that has experience and knows how to manage I mean Buck Showalter he's that guy he really is love that guy he will Buck we trust Oh, and Buck, we trust. He will defend any of his players. I mean, he he was literally close to throwing hands with a few of the, the Nationals in that opening series when they were throwing at us. Yeah, I it was loving crazy. That. Him getting to the top of the dugout just looking angry. It was fucking great. <laughs> yeah, no, I love Buck. I actually love our whole coaching staff. I love uh, Eric Chavez was a great addition as our hitting coach. Yeah. He was a great player with the athletics, so. I don't know. I just love – I think this is just a complete roster, complete management. You know, everything there is there this year compared to other years. Who is uh, – I've heard a lot of people talking about the third base coach. The third base coach? Um, oh, Joey Cora. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know much about him. Um, yeah, but, yeah, I've heard no, he's Eric a beast Chavez too. is a great, great hitting coach that we added. Um, and then we brought back uh, Jeremy Hefner from last year. It was a little bit go. suspect, but, you know, I don't know. It seems like he's got the boys pitching, so. If Buck believes in him, I do too, so we're good. Yeah, and Buck we trust. I mean, that guy's been there. Buck's coached some of the best players in the MLB. I mean, he coached the Orioles, and the Orioles haven't been relevant in years, and he was the last coach when they were relevant. He's been uh, in the talks to be the Mets manager for a few years now, and it's exciting that he's finally here. He's an absolute unit. I love everything about him. Like, it just seems like the team's so much different. Everybody's, like, so confident in him. Everybody just seems locked the hell in. I know we seemed locked in last year, but it was just, like, different. Like, we just – well, we have a leader now. Yeah. Luis Rojas wasn't that guy. Like, yeah. he wasn't that guy to, like, bring the clubhouse together. Yeah. And now with Buck, it's like, all right, we look up to this guy. We know he's been here. Like, we believe in this guy. Like, Rojas had no resume to have yeah. any respect – Buck has that respect, and he he's, like, a personal enough dude. Like, he goes up to his players, and, like, they all respect him. Um, so, I don't know. I love Buck, and I'm, yeah. happy with, I'm happy he's our coach. Big Buck guys over here. Fucking Louie was just, like – he was just, like, a, one of the homies in the dugout. Like, not even, like, a head coach. Like, he was just chilling. Like, everybody was boys with him. Everybody was happy. But, like, we just weren't locked in. Buck he didn't have us, any like, fire. In the right direction. Exactly. Buck doesn't fuck around. Buck is a no nonsense guy. Like even you were Rojas, saying when they were throwing yeah. at us in the first series, like he was ready to fight a pitcher. Like what are you doing, man? Yeah, no. Buck is like he's that guy. Like he will he will fucking fight. Like he would fight on the field. Like if they had to. Like he would love to scrum. So you know, I love <laughs> that guy. I love that guy. Yes, and I mean we've kind of touched on it a little bit, but uh, the team this year versus last year, like it's just. The roster seems complete. Like, every uh, oh. every position, we got a guy who can either produce in the box or in the field. The guys that we signed to plug in the holes have done their jobs. This never happens for the Mets. The guys no. we usually sign usually suck. Yeah. But, like, Starling Marte, I freaking love Starling Marte. He's a beast. He was that dude. missing piece in the outfield. He's also another guy, clubhouse leader. He's been there before. He's 33. Like, that's a guy you want to lead your clubhouse. He gives me a lot of vibes similar to Curtis Granderson. 
you Ooh. know, from that 2016 team. Not necessarily the way he plays. Yeah, but just, but just his, leadership and – His locker room presence and his personality. He's just a good dude that – like, you want that guy on your team. 100%. Yeah, no, it's been awesome watching him. And also, Mark Kanya has been killing it. He's Mark Kanya. Like, <laughs> Kanya, yeah. I didn't even know who that guy was from the athletics. Shout out the athletics. They gave us some – Marte was from the athletics, too. Seriously? They're giving us all those guys. But Khan is – he's batting, like, 400 right now. Yeah, 379 right now, 11 hits, yeah, six so. RBIs. I mean, he's contributing. It's been nice. It's been awesome because you never know, especially coming to the Mets. I feel like there's just something about joining the Mets as a team that just makes you worse as a player. Oh, and I mean, we don't see that yet. <laughs> there's so many – there's so many players when you think of it. Like, the number one guy that comes to my mind is Jason Bay when you oh, think of this Lord. absolute busts. And yeah. a lot of people were thinking Lindor was going to be that when he was playing last year. I mean, how bad he was last year. Like, oh, boy, we gave this guy so much money. And he's yeah, absolutely Ten years, trash. a billion dollars, whatever it was. He's going to be on the team till 2034, <laughs> that guy. Yeah, but, I mean, that's another guy, Lindor. I think he's got that confidence back. Yeah, he's and, balling. You know, he's been swinging a good bat. He looks a lot more confident at the plate this year. Um, yeah, and him now, and I'm Pete. I'm watching him play. Him and Pete are going uh, seven home runs between the two of them. Pete's 278 oh, yeah. average. Lindor's 308. Just clean up. We need our top guys to obviously hold the – like, we filled in those gaps, but our top guys got to be playing, like, top MLB players. And they are, and it's feeling great, and it's nuts. I think Escobar at third, he's been holding oh, it down. Oh, that, yeah, that's another addition. That guy Huge. can just flat out hit. He's just Huge. been a good hitter. He slaps the ball down the line. Like, he's just a pure hitter. It's a great guy you want in your lineup. The only guy that really sucks is James McCann. I can't stand James McCann. Oh, the McCann. And, of course, I, I fucking cannot hate him. stand him. <laughs> he is the worst hitter. Yeah. He, his swing is just awful. Who's I, our I other catcher? Is it uh, Nito? Yeah, Tomas Nito. Um, He's also not great, I, but I know we do have a catcher coming up in the minor leagues. Um, I think his last name's Alvarez, but he won't. He's still like I, he's like nineteen or twenty, so he's got yeah, probably two away. more years. But uh, yeah, hopefully he can come up soon. Because uh, yeah, James McCann sucks. He just cannot hit a baseball for his life. No, yeah, it, it is bad. What's he bad? One twenty. That's crazy. Something awful. He just uh, he doesn't look confident at the plate ever. I don't know. I just I do not trust him when he's at the plate. But other than that, I take most of our players, you know, on our roster to hit in a big spot. Other yeah. than him, other Jankowski. than him, and probably probably Luis Guillorme. Probably not either. Well, beardless Guillorme is a completely <laughs> different guy now. <laughs> he needs the beard back. Oh my lord! He looks, like, uh... sw- <laughs> he looks like El Chapo. Yeah, he looks like <laughs> Shrek when he turns into a human. <laughs> he needs the he needs the beard back for sure. He looks completely different. He went from looking like he was straight out of Guadalajara to looking like he's a mechanic in Queens. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what – I don't know. He does not look like an athlete. Another change from last year to this year is DH in the National League. It is uh, – I feel like I didn't even think about it till the first game, seeing our pitchers not hit. It is interesting having a DH in the NL League. Like, that's crazy. It's been the same way for 30 years and now. Yeah, I mean, I personally like it. I like the DH, even though I, don't, I, I do like the old school way of pitchers hitting, but – a lot of these pitchers just suck at hitting, and it's just so bad. I don't know. They get it, hurt more likely. Like, there's a lot of benefits to having the DH. It makes it way more entertaining watching, you know, watching hitters hit instead of a pitcher. Yeah. Plus, um, it allows us to like move. Like Lindor was the DH today. Pete was the DH a few days ago. Like, it gives us a time to make our let our guys relax and, and it lets certain injuries. players that normally wouldn't play in the lineup lineup play D- like jd davis and dominic smith are kind of like guys yeah. that like where do you put them they're kind of uh the odd man's out like i like where do you put those guys i, I yeah, Dom but they smith, gotta stick if you need them yeah i mean it's nice to have them on the bench but yeah they don't really have a spot in the lineup right now so definitely definitely different having the dh i think it's an advantage for us for sure Definitely. I feel like it is an advantage for us, but yeah, I do agree. Like, it was cool. It was just a cool thing to see, like, like seeing Scherzer go in the box, like, after pitching a lights-out I mean, yeah. inning. 
to like, Grom. It was just a cool little element to baseball, but it absolutely makes everything easier for the players and makes it more competitive, more entertaining. Like there's so much benefit to having the DH, but it was just cool to have the pitchers. But I don't yeah. know. No, nah, it's definitely I don't know. It's 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 needed to have the DH, especially with younger fans watching and people want them they want the entertainment and pitchers yeah. hitting does not bring any entertainment value. We were just talking about it a little bit. Dom Smith. There's been a big push amongst the Mets fans I see on Twitter to have Dom Smith at first. Pete at DH. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, I like it. I think Dom, he needs to be in the lineup consistently. I don't think he's a guy that's going to play well coming off the bench, you know, every three days. I just don't – he's not that type of player. He needs to be playing every day to be productive. And you just see, you know, the way he carries himself, you know, lay down because he hasn't been playing as much. And he's a guy that, you know, he's shown he can hit. And he can hit if he's in the lineup. So, I mean, I'm all for it. Give him a chance, um, and if he doesn't play well, then yeah, put him back on the bench. But I would definitely try to play him, you know, three or yeah. four games in a row and see how he plays instead of you know playing him one day and then sitting him two days and then playing him another day. Yeah, exactly. And P is going to produce at the plate no matter what happens. If he's a DH, if he's first baseman, doesn't matter. He is lights out in the box. He's an unbelievable hitter. Like I also do think that P takes a lot of pride in playing first base and how. He has been improving at first base, so I think I don't know. I think Pete does enjoy playing first and would would yeah. like to be out. He would like to be out there and not just DH. Yeah, I agree with that, and I think Pete. Like, there's just been a few fielding errors, there's been a few mistakes he's made. Like, other than that, though, I think Pete's a fucking great first baseman in the field. Yeah, since, he had that split the other day to keep his toe on the bag, get the out. I yeah, mean, I mean, people would since... say the lefty, you just catch it and tag him. But still, like, I, Pete's not a bad first baseman. He doesn't hurt us. No, yeah, since his rookie year, he's improved every single year at first. So yeah. he's definitely worked on his craft for sure. Um, another guy, too, that's, you know, been hitting pretty well that I honestly totally forgot that he was still on the Mets until spring training was Robinson Cano. He was suspended last year. But no, yeah, I, I, yeah, I kind of totally forgot about him. Uh, I didn't even realize he was still under contract with the Mets. And, you know, yeah. he's been hitting pretty well. Um, yeah, he's about 200. I mean, he's been good. I've, I've loved seeing Robbie Cano. He's walked a lot, which is crazy. He, uh, but, yeah, he's, only, he's been about 200. He, um, I think he's a good addition know. back. Because, I mean, who else we got playing second base? Louis Guillorme? I mean, Jeff McNeil could play. Yeah. Um, then but, you yeah. slide somebody in the left. I guess Mark Canna goes to the left. Escobar could play second, too. Yeah. A lot of these players are pretty uh, interchangeable. They can, yeah, they can play in a lot of spots. Cano's a good presence for, you know, an older player, too. So he's been there before, so he could help out in the playoffs for, you know, some of the younger players that haven't played in those big games. Yeah, 100%. Robbie Cano, veteran of veterans. He's a beast. I mean, yeah. It's he's crazy the... that he got got with PEDs. That's kind of nuts. Yeah, but still one of the best swings in, in baseball. I mean, that guy's swing is as yeah. pure as it gets. So, And that, I mean, honestly, an, old, an older player taking a year off isn't the end of the world. Like, you know what I mean? If anything, it benefits you when you're old. I know it's an extra year of time and you can have whatever, but taking that year off, just relaxing. Coming he back. was still like, he playing. Back, I'm pretty better. sure. Though. What last year? He was still playing in like the Dominican league and like some yeah, like other. Still 162 leagues. day MLB schedules. Crazy. Yeah, I'm sure he got some time to relax. Like I'm sure he looks better, and I'm sure he feels better than he's felt in the last few years. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, um, yeah, looking at this, I mean, pitching staff. I mean, Crazy. going through it, Chris Bassett. I mean, I didn't really know much about him. That's another athletics guy that we got. Um, didn't know much too much about him. Then started, you know, once we traded for him, started doing some research on it. But, you know, he's been great so far. He didn't pitch the greatest yesterday, but I still have a lot of confidence that he's going to have a great season. Yeah, the Bassett Hound. Yeah, he's been doing good. I like watching him pitch. He's a gamer for sure. He's like a bigger guy. And he just seems like uh, he just seems like a gamer, and he's gonna want to take those big games in the city once, you know, once the summer hits, the excitement's really gonna hit, and those crowds are gonna get exciting. Yeah, and it, the whole top of our rotation is nuts, dude. Like, imagine adding Degrom back into this. 
I've been telling everyone that. I'm like, we don't even have the Grom right now. Dude, Tyler McGill, Sylor McGill looks insane. <laughs> what I happened? know. He's insane. I don't know. He was awful last year. But I guess he's been working on his game because he's been looking pretty good. Um, I love three, that. We got three pitchers with 20 strikeouts. I mean, they're three starts into the season. That's crazy. What about, I mean, Carrasco looked great today. He's been looking great this year, too. Yeah, he's I mean, got 20 strikeouts at 18.1 pitched. I mean, I mean, he's been awesome. And he had a horrible season last year. So, I mean, I don't know. These starters have been looking pretty good. And, I don't know, we did not expect Tyler McGill to look this good. So, I mean, that's huge. No, and, it, and Edwin Diaz is holding it down at the end. Like, he's a solid closer. Just like the bridge getting from our starter to our closer. Yeah, Diaz is like, he definitely, I think he settled into New York after that. I mean, he had a pretty decent season last year after his horrible first year. Yeah. Um, so, I think he settled into New York and he's not under the same pressure that he was. You know, it's kind of similar to Francisco Lindor. He's kind of settling into New York. Yeah, even towards um, the end of last season, Diaz started to pick it up a little bit. But, yeah, I like watching him pitch. Like, he is uh, – it's a good way to close out the games. It's just getting from our starter to the closer, that little sixth, seventh, eighth inning window. That gets yeah. a little shaky. Our relief pitching is shaky. <laughs> very, very shaky. Like, Jolie Rodriguez, that guy that we got from the Yankees mm-hmm. – yeah. Uh, I'm not a big fan of him. He is very shaky. Seth Lugo has been not good so far. Um I don't I don't love our I don't love our middle relief. Drew yeah. Smith has probably been the best out of all of them. He's been looking pretty good. Um but yeah, I'm not in love with our relief pitching. I would love for us to trade, you know, at the deadline for one of the like a really good, you know, setup guy or a long reliever. Uh because yeah. we need somebody. Because I don't yeah. think we can hold the Trevor May with these not guys. us out of that hole. <laughs> Trevor May has been – I'm not a huge Trevor May guy. I don't know. He, he's been kind of a letdown since we signed him. Yeah, 100%. Not a huge fan. What's good with Ty Walker? Is he hurt? Yeah, he got hurt in his first start. So, he's on a 10-day DL – or IL. Yeah. Uh, so, he should be coming back at some point. But, yeah, I totally forgot about him too. And then we also have David Peterson who – He's shown glimpses of being a pretty good pitcher. So, I mean, we got got solid starting. We got pretty solid starting. And then, yeah, our relief definitely is a little shaky. Plus, when DeGrom comes back, it's going to open it up so much more because you take a guy off the end of the rotation and he could be a setup guy. Or I like Peterson in the – I like David Peterson in the bullpen. Yeah. What's he just come in chucking heat? I just like him better, like, pitching, like, two, three innings compared to, tr- like, them trying to yeah. get him to pitch six. Yeah. <laughs> he usually falls apart after, like, whole pitch, like, three good innings and then just, like, fall apart. Yeah. And then the Sean Reed Foley guy is a little suspect, too. I don't know. Yeah, we just need to uh, – we def- we have people to tr- – we have assets to trade for for more pitching, so I think we should at some point. Oh, Michael Conforto. That's well, a he guy. stinks. <laughs> Fuck that guy. That's but guy. yeah, Jesus. Michael Conforto. I mean, that's a guy that we definitely. I'm happy we didn't sign him to that huge deal. I never really he thought he was 150 worth. million over. Well, the Mets offered years, him 100 years. million. The Mets yeah. offered him 100 million. He bet on Which himself. Is crazy. He bet on himself. He sucked. And what is and he now, still not signed? He's not signed by anybody. Like, what's going on? Is he? Is he signed to the Mets, but he's holding out or something, or is he just no? Not he's anything? not signed to anybody. So he just has no contract. That's apparently fucking crazy. Apparently, he like hurt himself in the off season. I did hear something about that. So I don't know if he's working on an injury. I heard that he's going to be signing with someone in the next few months. Maybe not. Uh, I mean, I assume future. so. He's he, you don't just go from getting a hundred million dollar contract offer to being. I heard the, the long. But if he's hurt. Du- the Long Island Ducks, uh, the minor league team, uh, gave him a call, I heard, <laughs> about two Jesus. days ago. So, oh, my Lord, what is Baby go play for the Ducks. Call next? Maybe he can go play for the Long Island Ducks. <laughs> Good for him, man. Hopefully, Conforto figures it the fuck out. 
Yeah, let's he, talk about active I mean, he'll sign members somewhere. of the New York Mets. <laughs> he will sign somewhere. Whatever. Hopefully, it's not in a New York Mets system. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, let's hope. Let's hope so. Francisco Lindor. Yeah, I guess we already talked about that. Just people. I guess it's just the carryover from last year, which underwhelming season. Like people saying, we paid, we way overpaid for him. He's way overrated. He's not going to produce. He's unbelievable, dude. He's so good at baseball. No, he's so sick. I think last year the main problem was he got off to such a bad start that he was just chasing his average the whole season because mm-hmm. he got off to like a – he was literally – he started off like 100. He was literally hitting like 100 to start the season. So he had all that pressure on his back trying to get his average up, and it was just too much for him, which I totally understand. I mean, that's really tough when you have all those expect- expectations – and you're yeah. trying to get your average up each and every day. It's a huge mental game. And this year he got off to a good start, so he didn't have to worry about chasing that average like he did last year. So now yeah, he's just chilling. Now he's he just set chilling. himself up nice this year. Yeah, now he's just chilling. He proved himself already, so he doesn't have to worry about like proving himself like he already did. So now he can just chill. Yeah, and that's especially nice because in New York, if you come off. Your first game, if you're over three, you're hearing it. Like it is not a market that you could come in and suck in. And that yeah, just he makes started it like he started like over twenty. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you don't want to start that way. Not in the slightest, but it feels good, dude. First team in the MLB to ten wins—that's unbelievable. I know it's obviously it's way too early to be saying anything. Obviously, a lot of seasons to play. People get hurt. Especially New York Mets like to get hurt. But I feel I unbelievable about this team. We got a lot to go, but, I mean, we're literally going back to Arizona right now. I mean, that's another series. We can easily win that series yeah, against Arizona. Sweep that series. Fuck it. Then we play the Cardinals. I mean, that's a tougher team always. They're always going to be a tough team. Um, and then, and the then Phillies back to the back to Phillies. Back. I mean, those are two huge series to separate ourselves I mean, yeah. we could really, we could really get a huge lead, and then we play the Phillies again. So after we the could, Braves, yeah, after the Braves. So I mean, this could Jeez. be. I mean, if we just absolutely kill it against these teams, I mean, we could really build a big lead because the Phillies and Braves are the only teams that have a chance against us because the Nationals and the Marlins yeah. are irrelevant. So yes. I mean, if we can beat up these series to start, are huge. Massive, I mean, especially the net. Like, if we just keep doing what we're doing, losing a game a series, like winning every series, we beat the Nets th- or the Nats 3 1, the Phillies 2 1, Diamondbacks 2 1, Giants 3 1. If we just keep winning series and stacking series, dude, it's scary for the rest of the league. I, it's good to be a New York Mets fan. And you also don't want to be running through City Field in the playoffs. That is a scary place to play. You do not want to be playing Seriously. City Field in the playoffs. Like, I've been there firsthand, and it's it's insane. Yeah, it, <laughs> it is, is a, a party. It is a party, and it is tough to play for the opposing team. So, you do not want to be running through New York. Is there any more? Is there any fan base in sports that are crazier than Mets fans? I don't know, dude. It is nuts. Um, Mets fans Mets are fans nuts. Are crazy, yeah. Like, just being, like, I'm always on the Mets Twitter, like, looking for all Dude, if the Mets, shit. the next time, I mean, if the Mets win the World Series, it will be the craziest parade to happen in the oh, last man, 20 years. Dude. I oh, mean, that man. shit will be insane. That'll be wild. Tampa's very right. own. Polar Pete, get him a ring. Bring him back. Oh, I would love to, to celebrate see him down here in the Dittons. Pete would be going crazy at a parade. He'd be slugging beers. He's, like, he's baseball's gronk. <laughs> dude i love pete alonzo man he's the fucking best you can't not like the guy like he's so genuine and like yeah he just is who he is like he says it how it is and he's funny yeah he just he's loves really playing the game dude. baseball yeah no pete's the boy love pete i mean a he lot kinda, of these players are really likable all of them dude i fucking i mean i know uh Francisco Lindor had his little booing thing last season, but I loved that. I was on his side. Fuck the fans. <laughs> boo the fans right back if they're going to boo me. But I, yeah. everybody on our team's awesome, dude. I don't know. I'm looking through the lineup. Like, I feel like every year there's somebody on the team that you don't like, and I can't see anybody. 
Yeah. Another player that we didn't talk about at all, who I absolutely love, who's really been killing it, who was on the, you know, the COVID list at the beginning was, is uh, Brandon Nimmo. Oh Uh, yeah, absolutely. I love Brandon Nimmo. I saw a piece on him where they said during spring training, he was literally the last person at the stadium every single night. And he would take extra BP every single night. And he'd be the last one in there. 314. I mean, the guy, he works hard and, I, I'm really happy that it's all paying off for him. So seriously, and we need him in our outfield, dude. Like that, he's such a big piece. Yeah, I mean, I love him and Marte in the outfield together. I think they're a really good duo together, and I'm really happy we don't have Conforto anymore. I mean, we just hit on it a little bit—the Braves and the Phillies being the only teams that can compete with us in the NL East. But which of those two teams do you think is better? The one we got to look out for more. I think the Phillies. Even though they haven't been playing the greatest lately, I they do have a very solid roster. They made some pretty good additions with Castellanos and Schwarber. <laughs> um, you know, they have some pretty good – that... yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. And there's a line down the left field line by <laughs> Castellanos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I now I have think... my job again next week. <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. That guy, yeah. <laughs> People always think that was hit with his name. But, yeah, no, Cassianos is a solid player. Schwarber hasn't been playing that great for him, but I think he'll start hitting. I mean, that guy rakes. So, And they have a pretty solid rotation. So I think the Phillies are definitely a better team. The Braves losing Freddie Freeman, I thought, it was just a big Massive. blow for them. Massive. Because they don't have that leader. I mean, people say Acuna now, but I don't think Acuna. Like, he's, well, he's more, just one of the leader guys. on the field. Like, he's the guy you – on the he, field, you look to him. But, like, in the locker the room, uh, you need some veterans. And I also think the Braves just don't have the same pitching that they did last year. I think um, even last year, they overperformed, like, to their expectations. Like They just got really hot at the right yeah. time. And that's they're all baseball to, is. Yeah, they're similar to what the Nationals were when they won, like, mm-hmm. four years ago. I mean, they weren't the best team, but they got hot. But, I don't know, we'll see. The Phillies are interesting. That What's his name? John Bohm. Uh, yeah, that clip of him saying "fuck this place" was pretty funny. <laughs> that was great. That was great. I the love fans that even place. It. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he was like, "I fucking hate this place." <laughs> I was fucking loving that. That was awesome. Yeah, that's hilarious, um, dude. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see if these Phillies players can handle the losing right now in Philly, and if they just self destruct. Hopefully, that's what happens. Let's hope so. LFGM. LFGM, that's what I'm going to be saying all freaking year, baby. Yeah, seriously. This this team's got me hyped. Everything about it's got me hyped. I just – so much excitement. Can't contain it. I'm glad we got this podcast out because I needed to talk about it. Get my feelings going. Oh, yeah, going. for sure. Dude, for watch sure. I cannot game. wait for the summer. I can't wait till DeGrom comes back, dude. Like, at that point – Yeah, I mean, once DeGrom comes back, it's a whole – it's a game changer. But these games in the our... summer are going to be electric. I think our rotation now is better than it was when DeGrom was in last year. Oh, yeah, it's way better. Like, I'm saying without DeGrom right now, Scherzer, McGill, Bassett, Carrasco, Peterson, if you want. But I think right now our rotation is better than when we had DeGrom last year. Because two or three games a week, we're just auto losses. Oh, yeah. Now it's like we got a chance every game. Now you're, like, confident with who you got going out there. So, I don't know. It's a different year, different vibe. Players are performing that weren't last year. So we'll see if we can keep it going. Yes, sir. You got anything else? I think that's about it. I think we covered most of it. Yeah, no, I think we covered most of it. Hopefully, you know, this road uh, this road stand goes pretty well. And uh, once we get that home stand going, hopefully we're in a pretty good spot. Yeah, seriously. We take the uh, – I mean, the Diamondbacks and Cardinals, yeah, they're important. But that Phillies and Braves series coming up next, we take back-to-back series off both of them. Whew. We're rolling. Yeah, that's baby. gonna be that's gonna be huge. So I'm excited for that for sure. Yes, sir. All right, sounds good. I'm gonna end it. Everybody, listen this far. Thank you, LFGM. Let's fucking go, Mets. Let's this go, is baby. Polar Report episode one. Big, huge episode. The Mets aren't gonna lose a game the rest of the season. Thank <laughs> you for listening. Subscribe on Spotify. Peace. Peace. We're out.